Welcome to the Wisdom Lifestyle Money Show. I'm your host, Scott Dillingham. The goal of the show is to show you how you can grow personally, financially, have a larger net worth, and leverage your largest asset to help you develop the person you want to be. I take you through all the steps I did from being nothing to being told that I was nobody and I was never going to accomplish anything, from getting kicked out of high school to owning a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio in my own company with more than 20 employees. You'll meet our partners, you'll meet our friends, and you'll quickly discover how you can improve your life. So listen in and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Wisdom Lifestyle Money Show. I'm your host, Scott Dillingham. Today, I'm recording this one at home. It's a bit different than the normal format, but I was out on my uh, on my motorcycle and I was going around and I, I thought of this and it's something that happens all the time with clients nowadays and pretty much what they want to know is what are the interest rates doing, where are they going, and should we lock into a shorter term so then when that term is done, maybe the rates are lower or should we go with a five-year fixed and move forward. I wanted to just have a discussion with you on this because I think it's important and I think a lot of investors are missing out on this key piece. What's happening is obviously the rates have been going up. It's it's now June of 2023, almost July, and the government of Canada or Bank of Canada, sorry, raised the rates roughly three weeks ago. People are suspecting that they're going to raise the the rates again this year too. It's hard to say, right? These are economists guessing, and it's a guess, right? It's an educated guess, but it's still a guess, so it could be wrong. So we don't really know if the rates are going to go up or not. But what a lot of investors are trying to do is they're trying to beat the system. They're trying to think, okay, look, we suspect the rates might go up in the short term, but in the long term, they'll go down. And it's true like Canada on paper is in a recession, right? If you look at the gross domestic product of Canada and the definition of a recession, we are in one. Fiscally and financially, we haven't felt it per se. We, we have felt the cost of goods being quite high, but there's still like good employment numbers, good jobs. Obviously, this is not covering all cities. I realize some cities and towns might struggle with these things. I'm referring to a very broad approach where I'm speaking of the Canadian economy as a whole. Every recession, the rate's lower. Okay, that's what we expect, and they do that to boost the economy. Now, the lenders that I'm speaking to are saying, look, Scott, if the Bank of Canada does lower the rates, it's not going to be like what it did in COVID or in the 07 and 08 recession where they just slashed rates like crazy. Uh, It's going to be calculated, and it's going to be slow. And they also don't believe the rates are going to drop that much. They're suspecting that they just drop a little bit, where I know a lot of investors are hoping they, they get slashed. They just drop 2% overnight. And I, I guess at the end of the day, nobody really knows what's happening. But I do see a challenge is that clients are wanting to lock in to two or three year fixed because their thought is, look, if I get a five year fixed, I'm accepting a rate for five years. But if the rates come down, I'm going to miss that decrease in rates. So overall, I'll be paying more. And I think this is incredibly flawed thinking. And when I explain this, there's, I would say maybe half the investors get it and and half don't. So my word of caution to you is don't follow the flock. Use your emotions. Think about it and think what makes the most sense for my scenario right now. And I'll explain it and then you can decide what to do. So what the investors are anticipating is the rates are lower. So they're getting or wanting to get a two or a three year fixed with the goal that when that two or three years is done, that the rates are lower and then they can walk into something different. So overall they'll save money. But it's incredibly flawed because they're not literally writing down the interest that they're that they're paying. So if you get a two or a three year fix 
Now these are basic averages. I recommend speaking to us or another mortgage broker to get the exact numbers for you and your scenario. But if you think about it, the five-year fix right now is roughly one to one and a half percent cheaper than the two in the three-year terms. Now that's an average rates. You might find some that are just slightly lower than that, but you will also find some that are higher than that. So I'm saying on average, you're one to one and a half percent higher of a rate if you go with a two-year or a three-year. Now, in all honesty, the banks do that on purpose because they want you to lock in for longer because it's better for them. They have a customer for longer, right? So they discount the five-year more, right? But the argument becomes this. We know that the lenders and the economists are saying if the rates go down, it's only going to be a little bit. It's not going to be a lot. So they're not going to slash multiple percentages like what they did in the past. So with that thought in mind, right, you're willing, if you go with a two or three year right now, that means you're willing to accept a rate that's roughly one to one and a half percent higher than the five year. And you're going to have that higher rate for two to three years paying one and a half percent higher than what you thought you might have if if you got the five-year fixed. And they're doing this with the gamble that the remaining two or three years left, depending on the initial term that they picked compared to just going with a five, that those rates are going to be lower. But what they failed to realize is those rates have to be drastically lower to make up that savings or else you're paying the money. Because if the rates drop one and a half percent, it's going to be a wash for you. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you're overpaying one to one and a half percent for the first couple years. And then the next couple years, you might save one to one and a half percent if that's what it drops. So it has to drop a substantial amount for those savings to kick into play. And they're saying they're not going to do that. They're not going to drop it big time. So you have all these people that I believe are making the wrong decision because it's more of a gamble and not to say they're making a wrong decision. I don't wanna say that anybody's wrong in this because nobody really knows. Nobody can predict the future. But what I'm saying is the thinking is flawed because they're not literally adding up how much extra in interest they're paying over those first two to three year terms and they're factoring in massive drops which just aren't gonna happen. So overall, the investors are gonna end up paying more money out of pocket, I believe, in my opinion, because they're saying they're, the rates aren't going to drop that drastic. Why gamble? Do you know what I mean? Like, why gamble with your money? So my advice and my suggestion is get what feels right now. If you like the idea of that lower interest now, which will give you a lower payment and higher cash flow, potentially, right? Some markets there isn't cash flow because of the price, but in many markets there still is. So depending where you're tuning in from, but sit back and really think, is that really what's important to me today? Forget the future. Nobody knows what the future holds. We've not really been through a rate environment like this and then COVID and then recession. It's, it's different. So nobody really knows. I also know the Bank of Canada's overall goal is to raise interest rates. They want them higher than what they are now. Now they can't just do it overnight. I know they really increased the rate last year, but a lot of that was to eliminate the discounting that they provided for COVID. And a lot of the rates now are actually pretty close to pre-COVID rates. And I think a lot of homeowners ignore that fact. So they were naturally and gradually going up. And then COVID came and everyone's like, yeah, everything's so cheap. So just know, it's not like they're really higher than they were before. It's pretty much the same. But we we felt it because they raised it so quickly. It wasn't a gradual process. So my advice, again, is pick what's best for you today. Now, let's say you disagree with my statement and you think it is still better to get a two or a three-year term. I'm going to say that's wrong because you don't know the market. What if they do lower the rates in a year. And again, I know I'm using the word wrong. I, I don't int- mean or to, to call somebody wrong or insult anybody. But what I think is better 
a better thought instead of I'm going to go with a three-year term because it's going to be better than what if the rates are the lowest in one year? You know what I mean? And you've still locked in for three. If this is your game plan, you're missing out because you still locked in. If you are somebody that really thinks they're going to lower and you want to capitalize on that, and again, nobody knows, so it very well could happen, then I would say get the variable rates because the variable rate, that will adjust as the rates adjust. If you start to see that it goes down, then you benefit right away, even if the lowest rates are one year from now. And so that's the challenge with picking a two or three year fix is you're trying to not only trying to save interest overall in the grand scheme of things, but you're also trying to time the market and time when the Bank of Canada is going to lower the rates and it can't be timed. They base that on a lot of different variables. I think if that is your strategy and after hearing this, you still think it's best to choose a shorter term, then again, I would choose a variable. If you don't know this, the variable you can convert to a fixed at any point in time. So say the rates are the best in one year, or you feel like they're the best and you're hearing the news, you know, it's not going to change any lower. Like, this is where we're at. You can convert that and lock it in if you want to lock it in, or if you want to stick with the variable and ride that out, you have that option. But I just see a lot of investors not making those educated decisions and they're going to end up or could end up paying much more. I firmly believe they will end up paying more just from what I'm hearing as a mortgage person, as an insider. But again, the lenders telling me this, they don't know also. Nobody knows what's in the deck of cards. Again, I think if you're somebody who really needs that money, just get a longer locked in fix, like a five year fixed. Even if it does cost you a little bit more later, it's going to save you a lot now for the next couple of years anyways, because it's much lower. I think that's best, but if you want to write it out, then I would say go with the variable because then you can, you don't have to worry about timing the market. You're still in the game where you can benefit if they go down, but now you're not timing it. When it goes down, it'll go down and you'll be able to capitalize on that automatically because you don't even have to do anything. The rates come down, it, it goes down for you too. So that is what I would suggest to help you out. Plus, as an investor, the lower your rate, the lower the stress test. And the lower your stress test, the more you're going to qualify for. So if you're trying to build your portfolio and you're trying to grow, getting that smallest payment is going to be the thing that's very ideal for you to for your growth you know plans so that is what i i suggest i, I welcome your feedback let me know what you think about this if you have any different opinions right it's a really unique situation that we're going through i just my fear is that people are expecting this and if it doesn't happen then we're going to have tons of investors overpaying that have much higher mortgage rates than they should have and then on top of that, they're going to qualify for less down the road as they build their portfolio. It's, in, in my opinion, it's, it is better to go with the, uh, the fixed. But anyways, thank you for tuning in to today's show. I love your feedback. And if you really like the show, please share it. Give us a review. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. If you're serious about real estate investing and you want to take it to the next level with the least amount of time and mistakes, then you're going to want to sign up for our Real Estate Investor Hub. Visit CanadianRealEstateNetwork.com and hit the blue button or banner that says Free Investor Resources. Inside, you'll have access to real estate investing courses, networking opportunities, webinars featuring industry professionals as well as dedicated chat channels to share and get access to unique properties. I look forward to seeing you there.